Hey man, just in time. So today we're in TTDI and we're going to do another episode of Horror Series. So come, let's go check it out, man. What's okay, up, man? man? Hi, my name is Brandon. I'm 25, and welcome to the Horror Series. Okay, Brandon, we can see that you have a huge collection of shoes coming from various brands, Adidas, Nike and everything. So, how do you get into sneaker collecting and which shoe actually started it all? Well, I first started with basketball shoes. It was a lot of Kobe's, LeBron's, old school Kobe's. You know, I remember my first pair of Kobe's were the Kobe 7s. Okay. And uh, I remember like beating those to the ground every day. And so, you actually in... play ball, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I okay. played in school, played in uni. I still play now, in fact. No, okay. I actually have my first pair of Kobe 7s with me. Like, that okay. I will, don't think I will ever throw away. Wow. Oh, those are beat and yellowed. <laughs> I remember playing these in um, in high school during our competition. This was the Varsity. I call these the Varsity 7s. Okay, so I know you play basketball and you collect sneakers as a lifestyle thing as well. It's a hobby, passion, yeah. yeah. So, in total, how many pairs do you actually have in your collection? I think I've roughly got about close to 200 pairs. 200 pairs? That's how I counted. Guys, this is a small. 200 pairs. This is from small? What, from what we could fit in this space. I don't think this is 200 pairs, uh, so you're actually still hiding some from us. But okay, so I can see you have a lot of Jordans. So, what is your favourite basketball silhouette? I'd say my favourite Jordan from, well, I mean, from the first, you know, Jordan models will be the 11s. 11s? Why 11s? Because of the history behind it, you know? Concords are such a classic shoe. You know, Michael Jordan wore such an iconic shoe as well. And it's comfortable. Like, the cushion, materials, fit, support, everything. Like, I actually played a game in my Concords. People call me crazy, but I thought, why not? What really started like the lifestyle of like uh, apart from the, the breakaway journey from basketball shoes was probably these the OG pair of oh Ultra Boosts that are beat because we wear our shoes. <laughs> okay, uh, fair enough, fair you enough. Can yeah, see, yeah, you can know, see holes. I used to wear these every day. This is when Boost was uh, Boost just started coming out, you know. Before Kanye wore these and everyone just hyped up in these, but these were my first pair of Ultra Boosts. And uh, I still remember the day I like who remembers walking to a store? Like getting taking, this. getting a size and like just yeah. Like, I mean, you were just sitting on they the were sitting shelves on stores and for everything, weeks. right? So I thought, might as well try this, try them on. It was really comfy. I thought, okay, this is the pair I'm gonna get. Okay, and so I mean, we can definitely see like a whole collection of boots here, but we I see more Nikes and Jordans in the whole collection as well. So how do you actually branch out? Because there's a lot of people who started with boots. They stay loyal to boots and say like boots is life. So, what actually changed your preference into Jordan brand and Nikes that you have? Like, if we can see, we have the plaids, we have the hyper adapt, we got Marcia. What changed? Nike basketball has always been there. You know, it's always the general models. I never really chose a side. You know, people are Team Adidas, Team Nike. I'm more of everything because. Team everything. Team everything. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. know, it's, it's the best both brands have to offer. So I thought from Nike basketball I could move on to uh, the Kobe's and like when it reads more retros, you know, your Jordan 3, 4, 5, yeah. all the way till I think my favorite, well, in terms of comfort, Jordan 12s. Jordan 12s? Yeah, Jordan 12s are Not so boost. comfortable. Well, talking about Jordans. Oh, yeah. ah, okay. So, <laughs> move over here. So, which is your favorite Jordan 12? My favorite Jordan 12? Yeah. It's got to be a few games. And games. again, I played in these just uh, like Mike. When you were sick? <laughs> no, I wasn't <laughs> sick. But I, I mean, it's called just, games. Just you know, <laughs> for like nostalgic purposes, watching him play that game or well, replays, I wasn't during like watching the game live. But um, you know, watching the highlights of him playing, see how much he struggled in these. You know, that's why the infamy is called the, the flu game Jordan 12s. And they're really comfy to play in as well. A little bit bulky, but really comfy. What are actually your grills from Nike or Jordan brand? Or both, yeah. Well, okay. Well, if yeah. Show me, show me what you got. Yeah, show me what you got. Yeah. One Nike Grail, 
I definitely say for me is two platinums. Platinums. Like I remember seeing them for the first time online back when I was like quite young and naive. I was like, oh, I could call them online. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> You know, before you the can't. bots, you can't. And <laughs> you can't. So I remember um, saving up for these. Like I would sell bits of my collection over months, and uh, when I, I found a good price, I was like, you know what, it's time to do it. So that's how I got these. Okay, so which is actually the okay, grill that you would not sell? That I would say. I would not sell because of so much of how much time I put in to look for it in the right size and for a good price. Okay. It'd be my fragments. Ooh. These are still dead stock because I can't bring myself to um, yeah. bust them out yet. Yeah, I'll wait for a special occasion to wear them. There's no creases at all. So this is your if you if I will never live, sell these. Never. Never. Okay, so I'm guessing this one, if let's say the house gets burned down, this will oh, be the you safer. I think I just go down with it, like. <laughs> <laughs> I go don't know, down with it. <laughs> Guys, this this is what you call a true sticker, man. I don't know which true. shoes to save. <laughs> so clearly we've seen some grills and a lot of other shoes that is very hard to get. I mean, are equally difficult to get and expensive as well. But there's one thing that really caught my eye, which is actually the Fade to Black Kobe collection for his retirement. And you actually got all of them. So how did that come about? Was it easy? No, it wasn't. Well, you know, being like a basketball player and a Kobe fan, when they announced his retirement, I was like, whoa, if they're announcing a whole retirement pack. It's going to mean something. So I actually started off, the first Fade to Black I got was the Sixes. Yeah, so the Kobe 6 Fade to Black, I remember waking up early, um, this is when I was still in London, uh, waking up early, heading to Nike Town, and uh, I was camping there since 4am, the night before, and they opened at 10. But what happened was they actually handed out wristbands at 8. So I was still there waiting, and uh, I didn't actually get my size the first time, I had to trade with somebody. So they gave me a wristband for a size 12, and I remember collecting my pair and literally just when anybody wanted to trade for a size uh, for a size 11, I was lucky enough that this guy who also didn't get a size, wanted a size 12. So that's when we did a, we did a trade. So these were the first fade to black. I remember that whole week um, when they were releasing the fade to black collection, it was hectic because there were just so many people and you know, so in yeah. limited numbers and wristbands. Funny story, the first uh, Fade to Black that they released was the Hyperdunk. And the queue wasn't really organized. And then the moment the queue opened, there was no wristbands. It was first come, first serve. Okay. So the, like, the moment the queue opened, this guy runs in and just climbs like the escalator. All the way through. Climbs? Because that's where the collection point was. Okay. He literally climbs, he runs all the way, climbs up, and then to, just to get his pair. So that was the first release. But there's only one pair, right? Yeah, there was only for one oh, pair. I thought so it was the, good they were releasing the whole pair, like, like one pair each day for the week. Okay. You know, so I only caught on on the sixes. And then I tried online for the sevens, and that didn't really work out because, you know, copy on Nike is a myth. Yeah, so how so, how long did it take you to actually complete the whole? Um, it like, took me to black? maybe six months. Six, six months. Six months to like find the, my size in dead stock condition and for the right price, you know. Uh, and thankfully, I found a store in the Philippines who deliver who delivers worldwide. Oh, okay. Archived PH. Do you actually play in this? I have played in fives once or twice. Okay. Like the fives. There's an argument where people say Kobe Five is the best Kobe model. I I, I personally like the Kobe Fives. <laughs> I disagree. I think the best Kobe model is the uh, Kobe Nine because when the Kobe Nine first released, everybody was hating on him because. It was like, whoa, such a high cut. It's like a boxer shoe. And people thought that, you know, this, this thing was just for gimmick. Yeah. But, uh, but they have a, they were glow in the dark sole yeah. as well, right? Yeah, some of them might glow in the dark soles. But, but I think the first Kobe 9, the masterpiece, was a real like revolution in terms of like one of the best tractions ever on a Kobe, full fly knit, and uh, the cushion. So that's a masterpiece. Because you said at the beginning that you had about 200 plus pairs in total, which we do not see all here yet. But by the end of this year, how much do you think you will have and why are you actually looking for this year? 
I think I'm actually going to try and maintain or like offload a little bit more because now, now in my mind, it was more it's now more quality over quantity. Okay. So I think that I've, I'm letting go a lot of some double up Jordans. All right. Yeah. More of the retros more and the retros, such. Yeah, especially with the new release of the uh, Black Cement 3s. I think I'm going to need three pairs at least. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. And the Concord 11s supposedly at the end of the year. Yeah, they're so, retro again, excited right? For that. Yeah, yeah, pretty excited for that. Okay, so are you going to like keep it like a cap of like 250 pairs or do you think that's too much? Would there ever be too much sneakers in a collection? That's the biggest lie you tell yourself. It really depends on what you class as too much shoes. Like, I know some people with more than 200 pairs, 300, 400, they have whole room stacks full of shoes. So I think it's down to what, how, how much or how many pairs are you willing to keep and how, what pairs are you willing to let go. Okay, so are you to willing to let go some of your oh, pairs I've, actually? I've let go of some shoes that like, I thought I wouldn't like, oh, I don't really want to sell this pair, but I had to for, for a greater purpose. So, uh, I can't help but realise that your stacks there is actually filled with grills. And you have like uh, five out of the ten collection. We, yeah, I see two. Red Octobers, your beloved fragments. And I see you have the black cores, both the cores actually. Yes. Yeah, maybe you can tell us something about your cores. The cores? Well, what can I say? I actually prefer the grey pair to the black pair. The materials. You, know, you see your full... Yeah, it's full suede, full right? Full suede midsole, whereas this is more of a smoother buck. Okay. But in general, I think both pairs are really nice, but personally, I would prefer the grey pair. Okay, so I can see you have 5 out of the 10 collection from Off-White, you know, collaborating with Nike. So why this 5 or is it just not yet complete or you already got the ones that you wanted? Originally, I was going to try and get all 10. I'm okay. not lie. But I thought to myself, oh, which which pairs would I actually wear and which ones I actually like. So these are the five that I sort of thought, okay, I'm gonna definitely gonna wear these, they look good, uh, compared to the other um, other models. I've actually worn these as well. These are really comfortable. Uh, I thought Virgil did a really good job reimagining the pestos. Looks like I'll be seeing you wearing Watch the... Watch out for some on feet. Soon. Okay, Soon. so Soon. Where, where do we see this? What's your Instagram account? Oh, you can follow me at btkicks underscore. That's where I post most on feed photos. Guys, btkicks underscore, that's where follow the heat more is at. More heat. Yeah, man. Okay, so Brendan, uh, last year at Snickola, your on feed was the Hyper Adapts, and you got featured on on the top 20 on feed at Snickola 2017. So what do you actually think of this? Was this a grill that was hard to find? What, what was the story behind this? Well, it was definitely something I was interested in getting. Uh, <laughs> shout okay, out. sorry. You know, and Nike, I think Nike did a great job uh, putting innovation and shoes, you know, together with the auto lacing. It's quite comfortable as well. So I wouldn't wear it all day. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay, I, I got you, I got you, man. Um, just in case. But uh, yeah, definitely a really nice, clean looking shoe. And I'm excited for the uh, the new colorways to come out. So, but the new colorways were uh, a bit off. People might like them for the technology, um, but I kind of like them for the design as well. Like, I mean, the colorway, the oh, colorway the This is OG. I mean, yeah, the first, yeah. The first colorway. This is definitely done, yeah. one of the. This is yeah. the best colorway for me. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see a pair of Mars Yard here. It's very hard to get, right? And you know, this was under the space program by Nike yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So, how do you actually get your hands on this? I actually got this from a friend. Oh, you're a lot of friend, uh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this actually comes with a funny story. Originally, I had a pair of a friend hooked me up again. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna sell this pair. This is before the price shot up again like crazy. You know, recently the price just hiked up. The resale price, I mean, for these. Yeah, really so, high. So the first pair, uh, I sold. And then I managed to come by a second pair. And I thought, okay, now that the price is up, I can sell this one. Okay. Because obviously, you sell the one to get something else. At that point, priorities are different. Yeah, okay. So after I sold the second pair, I was like, oh man, I regret selling both pairs now. Oh, so, so I went ahead and um, just so happened, Seventeen Gallery had, had my, this. Had, had so this, this is your third pair? Yes. Whoa! <laughs> okay, so... But this is the pair I'm keeping. I don't oh, this is the pair I'm keeping. Uh, Brandon, thank you for letting us check out your stuff, your grills and everything. It was no problem. Thanks for having us, man. No like legit, nice collection, man.
Okay, guys, check him out. BTKicks underscore. And yeah, peace out. Woo! Hi, I'm Brandon. Thanks for chilling out with me on the Horror Series.